for well over two years now, even well before Aiji Onuma made the announcement at a Zelda concert in Tokyo uh, about seeing Skyward Sword on the Nintendo Switch, Zelda fans and YouTubers alike have made countless commentaries or theories around how you would port the Nintendo Wii U title from 2011 onto the Nintendo Switch. And now given some of the news that has come out recently about the upcoming Mario 3D Superstars title, I'm feeling very confident that this is a possibility. Hey guys, Unoriginic here and we're talking about Zelda again. It <laughs> feels like I've spoken about Skyward Sword for years now on the Nintendo Switch, but um, for once we, we finally got a look at what it could look like on the Switch. But let's just backtrack a little bit. The, the most popular theory about how this game would work on the Nintendo Switch, and certainly something that people have been talking about a lot since the uh, supposed leak from back in August, is that you would map the motion control of the Wii Remote of up and down, left and right and diagonal to the control, the left control stick and just have it a one-to-one -one ratio of that. A couple of YouTubers likened it to the controls of a game called Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I think <laughs> that's a Konami title from the PlayStation 3, uh, where you would control the sword direction by moving the stick. I've tried mapping Skyward Sword on a, on Dolphin um, to this controller, uh, and also to an Xbox 360 controller back in the day. I didn't like it. I don't think it works that intuitively. My own theory from a couple of videos ago on the subject was that Nintendo would release Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, and Skyward Sword all on one cartridge. I know that sounds like a very foreign concept for Nintendo, but it's happened recently with Bioshock and now with more recently Mario coming to just one cartridge. And then you'd be able to address the problem of Skyward Sword not being able to be played with a handheld con configuration by having Wind Waker and Twilight Princess accessible for when you're doing a commute or if you don't have anything else to play it on, and then playing Skyward Sword once the device was docked or once you were able to put it on tabletop mode and then being able to play with the Joy-Cons in that configuration. This was before the Nintendo Switch Lite, which I think again was a naming convention error they called, should have called it the Lite Switch. Uh, before that console was released, this was my theory, uh, and I think they still could do this to a degree by releasing a collector's edition that comes paired with a Joy-Con set themed after Zelda, you know, like the golden Wii remote with motion plus controls that you got with the original Wii version of Skyward Sword. Now that was all in the past, that was what my theory was of what they would eventually do, potentially. Now with Mario 3D All-Stars coming to the Switch, I think we have a better picture of what Nintendo would do with that motion control issue. You see, that game has Mario Galaxy on it, which has motion controls in it. I never knew this, I never played the game. But Nintendo has addressed the issue of how motion controls will work on the Switch in handheld mode in a very Nintendo way. Which for me feels very natural, like a natural progression or transition into what you could do with Zelda Skyward Sword. How's Nintendo addressed the motion control issue, you ask? By using the touch screen which is so simple that I never even thought about. I mean, with Skyward Sword, you can slash or you can thrust by either swiping left or right or by just touching the screen. And then you can just map the shield bash buttons or the controls that you would have with the nunchuck when you're playing in handheld mode to either the X or the Y buttons. And that way your Nintendo Switch Lite customer base still has the experience of being able to play the motion controlled game, even though it's a clunky way about it. Uh, I, I still feel that you'd be able to address that for people who only have that configuration option. Uh, and then if they don't like Skyward Sword, you can release it with two other 3D Zelda titles on the on the one game card so that they don't get bored. So that it's worth paying $100 New Zealand, that's New Zealand dollars, for the game card. So for me, this, this gives me a lot of confidence now that Skyward Sword is a real possibility that they will be able to address the concerns that people had without remapping the entire game or reconfiguring the entire game, which is another thing people talk about that I just don't see Nintendo doing. They'll fix the little things, you know, they'll fix Fee with her insistent nagging and reminding you that your battery is low, telling you what items are over and over again. But for the main core gameplay, you're not going to get rid of those motion control puzzles. There'll be ways of using the touchscreen to use the uh, the bomb motions of overhead or rolling and that sort of thing um, that I'm sure that they can configure with the spare buttons that they'll now have and the option of using a touch screen for navigating those, those various different puzzles. So now that just really leaves the big question of 
what other games would they package on the card? Because if we follow suit of the Mario 35th Anniversary Edition 3D All-Stars, you've got one game from each console generation of 64, GameCube, and Nintendo Wii. Following that pattern, you'd probably have Skyward Sword being the Wii native game. Um, Twilight Princess was cross-generation, so would they do Wind Waker? And then would they ignore Twilight Princess and do <laughs> Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask? Or is it true that you're going to be able to unlock um, Galaxy 2 and maybe they just have Ocarina of Time and you can unlock Majora's Mask and Wind Waker and you can unlock Twilight Princess? Or are they going to just ignore everything from the 64 generation and drop the ports that they had for the Nintendo Wii U of HD Wind Waker, HD Twilight Princess and the HD version of Skyward Sword that they were developing when they were playing around when they were testing like HD environments for when they were getting ready to make Breath of the Wild because they have a copy of that out there somewhere it's just the controls and the access to it with a game console that can use a Wii remote so if they were able to map that which I think they can do with touchscreen to handheld. They'll have no issues with using the Joy-Cons by the looks of it. Um, Mario Galaxy has a pointer available and stuff like that. People said you couldn't do that without a sensor bar. They've nailed it. I think it's coming. I think we've got this game in the bag and it's just a matter of time of waiting and seeing what they do. When they do do that, when they do make that step, I'll be there to cover it. I'll be doing some gameplay. I can't wait to play Skyward Sword again. Uh, and I hope you guys will be there with me to enjoy that next step in uh, the Zelda franchise. So thank you very much for stopping by. Let me know your comments, your thoughts down below of uh, what you think they'll do, how they'll do it, when they'll do it, where they'll do it, why they'll do that. Uh, and I'll read your comments and I might even reply to them. I've been on the original. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. And hold your breath and feel the tension Devils hide behind redemption Honesty